Hello everyone, I guess you are here because you want to understand the bank reconciliation statement, how to do it a little bit better. Uh, I'm not going to spend a lot of time to let you read the question because if you want to read the question or you haven't read the question yet, you should just pause the video and read the question before continuing. So in this question, um, you are given the cash bank account and the bank statement and you are asked to perform uh, update the cash book and perform a bank reconciliation statement. Now, the first step that you do when you do bank reconciliation statement is that you should um, check opening balances of the cash at bank account and the bank statement. So the cash at bank account opening state, opening balance is 22,500. Where is it? It's over here highlighted in yellow, 22,500. Alright, so we're going to see whether that is the same as the bank statement. Actually, no. The bank statement is... 49,500, all right, and it's actually different, but you can see 22,500 over here. This amount is the same amount as the cash at bank amount. What happened? There's actually a withdrawal of the check, 5,001. This withdrawal of the check is probably because in the previous month, in the previous month, uh, this person had uh, the business, paid a check to a creditor and the creditor only just withdraw the check this month. So what should you do after this? Now you not need to agree opening balances. So anything above, no, anything, anything above 22,500, you need to cancel it away. So that's why we are cancelling all these things above 22,500. Right, so anything above the 22500 you will cancel. Now the next thing that you will do is to open uh, to agree the items inside the cash at bank account to the bank statement. So you need to agree one at a time. So you can see that all those that I have cancelled away, all these that I cancelled away, right? I have already agreed it. So again, if you need to time to agree, open, uh, agree the different uh, numbers, you should pause the video because I don't want to make the video too long. All right, the third thing that I need to do is I continue reading. Uh, I realized here, um, I realized here that there was some additional information and the additional information was given. It was also discovered that the accountant had incorrectly, it was the accountant, uh, the accountant was, had incorrectly recorded the transaction on 6th of May. So this incorrectly recorded the transaction, I have on 6th of May, which one is it? So I highlighted it in red. So this uh, 1007 Credit Kelly Warehouse. So the accountant made the mistake. This one is wrong. Let's see whether I can put a little cross here. Aha, uh -huh. there you go. This one is wrong. So which one is correct? So it is likely that the bank statement is correct. All right, so the bank statement is correct. This one here is correct. All right, if this is correct, this is wrong. So later on, when we update the cash book, we must remember that you should not minus 1,007. You should only minus 1,005. So in order to balance it out, right, you need to record a debit of 200. How to get through? Which one? Yes, how to get 200? 1,007 minus 1,005. All right, now we are ready to start to prepare and update our cash at bank account. When we update our cash at bank account, we should start with the ending balance over here which is highlighted in green. We should start with this 53565. Five, and that it, and then which one do we record? Or which transactions do we update in the cash at bank account? Do we update all these uh, cash at bank numbers that never tick? Or should I update all the bank statement numbers that is not cancelled away? You should update the bank statement numbers that have not been cancelled away. So this is how it looks like, all right? Balance brought down, this balance brought down. So this balance 
This balance brought down is actually from the cash at bank account. All right, so this 53565, I'm going to show you where it is. Can you see this green color? 53565. Now, I am going to update all these. Uh, actually, there's only four, right? This All this green color one. Here got two, here got one, and here got one. So how does this look like inside the cash and bank account? This, firstly, the standing order rent means that you paid for rent. So you will need to record it as a minus inside your cash and bank account. Secondly, there is a rejected check. So what is this rejected check? 7th of May. Let's go and see what happened. Oh, is this 7th of May over here? What is this 34200? We go to our cash at bank account and we notice that there's this 34200 over here. What is this? This is a? Yes, that's right. It's a dishonored check. Probably what happened is that Dolly Shop tried to pay you you bank the money in and maybe there's something wrong with the check or Dolly Shop doesn't have enough money in her bank account. So the bank has taken the amount out of the bank account now, all right? Because previously they uh, put it in, now they need to take it out. So that's what's happened. So if that's the case, right, you will need to record this as a minus in your cash at bank account. So these two numbers will be shown as a minus in the cash at bank account over here. All right, we minus away. And for Jolly Shop, right, um, you should not write like this, right? What you can, what you need to do is you need to realize that Jolly Shop is a trade receivable. So we can write something like that. Trade receivable, Jolly Shop, dishonored to show that this is a dishonored check. All right, finally, you need to rec uh, you also need to record this um bank charges here. 35. Hey, Xiao Xing, ah. the, you don't drop on the floor, okay? 35, which will minus away from your cash and bank account because bank charges, when you pay for bank charges, you have lesser money in your bank account. Well, the final item on the bank statement is this commission income. This commission income, you will need to increase it. All right, you need to increase it because um, you receive commission income for it. All right, and that's how we record the last two items. This 35 over here and the commission income right over here. Okay, now... One more thing that you need to remember you need to do would be this Kelly Warehouse. Remember we said that this 1,700 was recorded wrongly. You credited too much money because the correct amount is actually only 1,005. Right? You credited too much money. So what you need to do is that you need to add back. You need to debit 200. Alright? So we are going to record that debit 200 into your cash at bank account. You don't really need to write error beside, okay? So uh, you don't really need to write error. Now, this is a trade payable. Why is this a trade payable? Because your original transaction, you see your original transaction here, you paid Kelly Warehouse. So it is very likely that Kelly Warehouse is your trade payable. All right, it's your trade payable. And there you go. One thing that you need to notice. One thing that you need to notice is that all the numbers, all the dates are on the 31st of May. It's the last day of the month. All right. That is something special thing for Cash Bank account. It's updated on the last day of the month. All right. It's updated on the last day of the month when you are performing the bank reconciliation statement. Okay. And finally, your balance brought down for the month is bel uh, 5730 debit. Okay? Alright, so how do we prepare our bank reconciliation statement next? Now, when you take a look at your update cash at bank account, 5730, it is still different from it is still different from your bank statement of 2065. Now, why is it different? It is different 
because of all these things that you have not recorded in uh, rather all these items that the banker has not recorded in the bank statement so which ones are we talking about we are talking about this two two three five this 910 from Ram Wholesaler and $15,000 from Benny Factory. So these three items here. So these three items, do they have special names for it? Yes, they do. Benny Factory. Benny Factory is a debit, which means that the uh, cash at bank account has actually increased. So you have received some money from Benny Factory, which the bank has not recorded yet. The bank hasn't recorded that. So this $15,000 is actually known as a deposit in transit. A deposit in transit means that the money is on the way to your banker. It's just that your banker has not received it. So a deposit in transit all right, a deposit in transit needs to be added to your, or, or, or rather, yeah. Okay, so if you start from your bank statement number, a deposit in transit needs to be added in. So let's take a look. So if you have your credit balance as per bank statement over here, this is your, uh, actually you just need to say bank balance as per bank statement. All right, you need to add your deposits in transit. All right, and deposits in transit, they are deposit, which is on the way to being recorded by your bank account. And that's why uh, you have not, your banker has not recorded it yet. All right, so Benny Factory, Plus. What about the other two? The other two over here, you have this uh, in, in blue, right? These two over here, 2235 and 9100 from Valerie and Co. and Ram Wholesaler respectively. So what happened here? It's a credit which means that you try to pay this amount but the banker never recorded it. Means what? You probably wrote the check and then you minus it away from your cash at bank account. But your banker did not record this. So since your banker never recorded it, you need to minus away from your bank statement. All right, you need to minus away from your bank statement and this is called a uh, checks not yet presented. Now, what is the meaning of checks not yet presented? It means that Valerie and Co. and Ram Wholesaler might have received the check already, but they haven't presented it to the bank. They haven't brought it to the bank and asked the bank to pay them back, all right, to pay them the money. And that's why your banker never record a minus. Uh, so that special name for such checks is called checks not yet presented, these two. And since your banker hasn't paid it, you should minus away from your cash you uh, from your bank statement amount, which is what your bank reconciliation will show you here. Valerie and Co. and Ram Wholesaler should be deducted away from your bank balance as per bank statement. And finally, all right, finally, um, after you 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 deduct all the numbers and add all the numbers, right? Your number, your final uh, balance, right, should be the same as your cash at bank number. This 5730 right over here should be the same as the 5730, maybe a bit smaller, there you go. Uh, these two numbers will be the same. That's how you know your cash at bank has been correctly recorded. All the best for me, yeah.